surrender to you, I was doing my best to serve you, Lord, why would this come? Now that's a hard thing to take. When you do something wrong, you know you deserve it. When you're doing things right, you can't figure it out. Jesus never did anything wrong. Get this straight. Yet he learned obedience to the things which he, what? Suffered. He suffered. The agony of rejection, the agony of, of his own refusing to receive of him. The humiliation, first of all, as, and we don't have time to get into Philippians chapter 2, but read it. I wanted to get into that, perhaps next week. He made himself of no reputation. He was equal with the Father. Came down among his creatures that he created. To be rejected, to be despised, to be spit upon, and eventually crucified. The discomfort that he went through and the agony of soul. The denial of those that he even counted on. The betrayal of those that he loved and worked with for three and a half years. All these things he went through, totally innocent, and yet came against all these forces. How do you handle such things? The agony of those moments in your life, when you feel so wrenched and you said, I'm trusting you, God. I'm claiming your word, you quote scripture. You walk the floor and tears are streaming down your face. And you say, God, you're God, and I believe you. And everything's still going wrong. How do we handle it then? When that which you treasured is taken from you. That which you believed for has been snatched away. And you can't understand it. There's no explanation. And you walk the floor and the tears flow and the agony of your soul. You say, my God, I don't understand what's going on. The Lord said, just hang in. I'm making you an overcomer. When you can walk through this and come out on the other side, Praising me. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. When you can come through it, regardless of what it is, and you can say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. I don't understand it, but you're God. With that which seems to be overwhelming, and it seems that there are a thousand devils come to harass you. You can shake it off and praise your way through and worship your way through and break through and say, I don't understand it, but I will bless the Lord and let the anointing come. It will break the yoke of depression. It will break the yoke of oppression. And you will come through singing, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Rama Sakoriyanda. Hallelujah. He is God. He is God forever. Oh, blessed be, oh, blessed be the Lord. Somebody's getting victory in your soul. God's letting you realize that your past is not going to determine your future. Let me say it again. Your past is not going to determine your future. God, who has called you, is faithful to bring you through it, to fulfill everything he's called you to do. Hallelujah. Shake it loose, step forth. Rise up from the ashes. Move forward in the strength and might of God, for his purpose still is upon your life. God hasn't changed his mind. He's still making you a son and daughter in his kingdom to bring you into a place that you'll overcome. It's not all going to end here when you die. That's going to take you into the kingdom. He's going to position you. You're going to come back and rule and reign with him. You're going to be over nations. You'll rule cities. God says, how can I give you uh, the place of a rulership if you weren't even faithful in your own local church. If you weren't even faithful in the house of God, how can I make you ruler over even any group of people, let alone a city or a nation? God is getting us ready so I can see something greater. So work on, Lord, work on. And it says that when he, through obedience and through the things which he suffered, learned obedience, being made perfect. And that is the secret, verse 8 and verse 9. Being made perfect became the author and of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now, he could never have done what he did for us if he didn't finally yield it over to the Garden of Gethsemane. And as a result, it said he became the author, the beginner, the begetter of our eternal salvation because he was willing to go through the period of suffering to do what the Father wanted. Let me conclude with this today. If you are willing, 
if you're willing to walk this thing through, even through the agony, and even through the tears, we've had our share. We know what it is to be disappointed beyond description, trusting people, counting on people, relying on people, knowing that surely they're going to be there, they're not there, they let you down. How many know people will let you down? Get used to it. Even the best of friends can let you down. So we don't live for people. We live for God. Don't count on people. It can disappoint you. I've done that. Believe me. Over the years and all the years of ministry, I've counted on people. I said, oh, they'll be there. You can be sure of that. And then something happens. They're not. Some of the ones you thought would be with you until you die. Watch your last breath. No, they didn't show them. You say, Lord, what's happening? You're, you're, you're touched by the blows. Only a pastor knows more, perhaps, than anybody else what he longs for in his people when it doesn't happen. It just grieves the son of grief. And sometimes it's unbearable and indescribable. But then you go on and say, Lord, you've got something waiting for us on the other side. It's not all over. But if you walk this thing through in serving God faithfully, even through the things that pain you, you'll come out the other side being made perfect. In other words, mature. That word perfect means develop, mature to the place that you can now be in a place of being a together, an author of something new in God. Something is about to happen to somebody in this house today. God is about ready to release you from something old into something new. Now, even the old has been wonderful. It served its purpose, but it's not for you today. Shake it loose. God is something new for you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody get in the registry in their spirit. You say, well, I think I'm too old for anything new now. I think I just coached out the rest of my days. No, no. How many Moses 80? God brought him into something greater in his life than he ever knew before. Joshua, age of 80. Boy, I'm just a young guy after a little when I look at all the books. Something good is going to happen. Believe, even some of us settle in too soon. We give up too soon. God is bringing us into his perfection. And sometimes, some of us are late bloomers. You know what I mean by that? Some of us don't get to blossoming. We should have maybe been sooner, but we finally get to where God wants us. But he's going to do it for us. Hallelujah. And the fruit of it will be sweet. And the purpose of it will be glorious. Don't give up. You're on the break from the earth. Press into God. Even through the agony of your own soul, when he cried, it said, with deep cries. You know, many times you go through things that you'll be the agony of your soul, but at the other end, there'll be joy. Who for the joy that was set before him, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. I wanted to get into that verse, but I'll just conclude with it. He who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. If you don't understand what's beyond, you'll find it hard to endure. It'll be too hard for you. But if you know what lies beyond, you can go through it. Endure. I'm not giving up. There's enough fight in me to get the Holy Ghost to press on in God until the work is accomplished. He that will endure to the end, Jesus said, shall be what? Say, if you don't endure, you're not going to receive the reward. It's only given not to the weak, but to the strong. And so as you press on in the things of God, you will see the purpose of the Lord being fulfilled. Don't give up now. Press on in God. God has something special for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for the witness of the Holy Ghost. We want to be overcomers. You called us because you said there were more than conquerors. So Lord, we just wait before you to see the purpose that you've called us unto fulfill. Let the glory of your presence flood our hearts. Let the desire for you be so intensified in this that we will not give up, we will press on. Everything that you've spoken to your children,